سرکارا اینے مرحبا دلدارا اینے مرحبا لجپالا اینے مرحبا سردارا اینے مرحبا مرحبا تشن مانا اوسارے تشن مانا اوسارے ایتانی ایت آئی خوشوئی پہلا اوسارے ایتانی موسیقی doing milads at home or doing ganavishi from at home. What I'm saying is when you do when you do milad at home and you do not follow uh, the fard acts, if you do ganavishi at home and you do not follow the fard acts, then what is the point? Then what is the point of doing these mehfils and these programs at home? You know, we are all gathered here. I, you know, mark my words. Uh, we are gathered here and what happens is that we listen to all these speeches, we listen to the praise of the Prophet Sallallahu we listen to the Qur'an and the only thing we take uh, or we, we get is a full stomach because from eating. That's the only thing that we take from these programs. We need to uh, take heed and, uh, the, uh, from the nasiha that is being mentioned. And this is the only thing that we need to take. This food, also, we, you know, food is food. But what we learn from these programs and these mahfils and these milad shrifs, these gyanwi shrifs, is knowledge. Yes, sir. And seeking knowledge is very important. Yes, Subhanallah. And when we do these, uh, in my number one fan this is. <laughs> when we do these programs at home, we need to understand <coughs> that when it comes to the faraid, we do not follow them. But the Prophet ﷺ would be much happier with us if we followed the Fraid and then do the Malad. Gosi Park would be happier with us if we followed the Fraid and then do the Ganami Shri. This is how it works. What did the Prophet ﷺ say? The coolness to my eyes is prayer. And what we need to learn as Muslims is the reason we backbite, the reason we listen to the waswasa, the whispers of the shaitan is because we are ignorant in seeking the knowledge. You know, when a person that lies and does not tell the truth, the angel runs away from him because he has a foul smell in his mouth. So you can brush your teeth as much as you want. You know, you think you can have that mouthwash in your mouth. Do whatever you want, rinse your mouth, jet wash it, whatever you want. But that foul smell, the angels will smell and run away from you. And when them angels run away from you because of you lying, who enters? The shaitan. And the shaitan will tell you what to do. And that's when you follow the waswasa, the whispers of the shaitan. And this is why we butt bite about each other. I've mentioned this many times that there are hadith of the Prophet ﷺ about being punished in the grave and in the, uh, in the hereafter, about backbiting. Why do we do this? It all comes back to seeking knowledge. If we do not know anything about Islam, we would not know anything. This is why when we don't understand what Islam is telling us, we are going to backbite about others. We are going to lie about others. This is how it starts. Why do you think the companions never backbited? Because they followed Islam according to the Quran and Sunnah. <laughs> the the, 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 the family of the Prophet done the same. The awliya done the same. And when they do these examples and they follow the Quran and Sunnah, it is our duty to learn this and, uh, and follow these footsteps. Yes. We like to talk about others, but we never focus on ourselves. You know, a, a saying, a great saying, that, um, they say that do not throw stones at a person's house when your own house is made out of glass. Because you gotta look at yourself. But I'm, whatever I'm saying, don't think I'm, I'm having, a, I'm targeting anyone, or I'm, I'm speaking in general. The, the first person that should be acting upon this is myself, because I'm telling you that. 
And I should, uh, Allah should give me the ability to, to act upon this first. And when it comes to the importance of speaking the truth, it is mentioned in the Quran that curse is upon those that lie. Curse is upon that person that lies. And there are three signs of hypocrisy. Hypocrisy, you know, betrayal. Hypocrisy is one of the biggest uh, problems in this day and age. Lying is one. Hypocrisy is number two. And there are three signs of hypocrisy. What is the sign? Number one, when a person speaks, that person tells lies. Number two, when a person promises, that person fails to keep it. And if, it, if you, the number three, if you trust a person with something, that person breaks the trust. And what does Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu says? He said that a liar's biggest punishment in this world is that even if he tells the truth, the truth, people will reject it. People will reject it. You know, when we do things in our lives, in our daily lives, we should not think about what a person will say about us. We should always think about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say. We should always fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A, a, a famous story a lot of people have mentioned, especially the teachers that mentioned this, that in a classroom there was a teacher and four students. A teacher gave an each student a sweet. And he said, he goes, go wherever you want, eat this sweet where no one can see you. <coughs> and these students went... And one student went under the bed, the other one went in the wardrobe, the other one went to the fields, where no one could see him, and the fourth one uh, didn't eat his sweet. And they all came back to the class the next day, and the teacher asked them, he said, where did you eat your sweet? He said, I ate mine under the bed, and no one could see me. The second one said, oh, I ate mine on the fields, and no one could see me. The other one said, I ate mine in the wardrobe, no one could see me. And the fourth one put his, uh, his sweet on the table. And his teacher said, why didn't you eat your sweet? He said, oh teacher, wherever I went, doesn't matter if I was under the bed, doesn't matter if I was hiding away from anyone else, but I did not eat the sweet because I knew Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what you call a fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where you do something not for the sake of people, but for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you fear not for the sake of people, because of the, the, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if something happens, what, what are you not going to do? Wow. Say something to me one day, say something again the next day, another story comes, you'll move on to that. But, when on the day of judgment, when everything will be in front of us, I will be accountable for what I've done in this dunya. And then I will be punished for what I've done in this dunya. This is why we need to acknowledge this. We need to be caring with each other. We need to be kind with each other. These are the, the examples of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And these companions... They sacrificed everything in the way of Allah. The awliya sacrificed everything in the way of Allah. So we can seek that knowledge. So we have an understanding of Islam. <coughs> and when it comes to this, we do not have qadr. We do not appreciate our God Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do not have qadr for the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala wa sallam. We can do all these malads as much as we want. But if we do not follow the Quran and Sunnah, there is no point of anything. <coughs> This is what we need to understand. What does Sayyid Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu says? This is about appreciation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, when my prayers are answered, I am happy because it was my wish. But when my prayers are not answered, I am even more happy because this was the wish of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we do not have qadr for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we do not have qadr for the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala wa sallam. And this is why a, a poetic, he said, qadr nabida ye ki janun dunya dar kamine. Qadr nabida wo hi janun jo soge bich madine. Subhanallah, subhanallah, mashallah. Hal laka sirrun عند Allah. بينك أنت وبين الله هل لك صدقات تخفى لا يعلمها إلا الله هل لك سر عند الله بينك أنت وبين الله هل لك صدقات تخفى